Uh, Jonathan Peters, Daily Telegraph. Archbishop, have you uh, decided yet whether Bishop Jean Robinson will attend in any capacity? And what is your message to those bishops who are threatening to boycott? Sorry, those bishops who are... What is, what is your message to those bishops who are threatening to boycott the Lambeth Conference? Jean Robinson has not been invited to the Lambeth Conference, and it's proving extremely difficult to see under what heading he might be invited to be around, and that's where we are. To those bishops who don't wish to attend, I recognise their absolute right to choose in good faith and in conscience whether or not they can be there. The invitation is on the table. Naturally, I should be delighted to see more rather than fewer bishops there. That's their choice, but the door is open. Um, willingly. Um, you're right, there are different understandings around, and when I say that part of the focus of the whole conference will be reinforcing Anglican identity, I would like it to be an event from which we can go feeling we're clearer about where the centre is and what the, the essential mission of Anglicanism is. That means we've built into the, um, the daily programme, which I've got somewhere, um, a couple of sessions on Anglican identity, on hermeneutics, on the science of interpretation, and on evangelism and mission. So we would hope that that will be essential to the conference's working. The covenant will be discussed briefly early on and in more detail towards the end. We want to see in the interim how people have reacted, what people want to put into that process. Well, naturally, I'm always pleased to see prophecies of doom overturned. Um, I think it does indicate that there is a very widespread desire to work at this, and I, I really welcome that and thank God for it. Um, it's worth mentioning, of course, that past Lambeth conferences have had their ups and downs in this respect as well. And um, I hate to say it in this company, but of course the Archbishop of York refused to attend the first Lambeth conference. <laughs> <laughs> He was very young at the time. Of the first <laughs> um, Archbishop, um, just two questions again. Have, have, have you considered going really radical and inviting everybody? Um, so Martin Mins and Anthony Robinson. And um, your opinion is um, the land conference is one of the instruments of communion. And um, if, say, 75% came, 25% stayed away, or 20% stayed away, would that, in your view, constitute the beginning of formal schism? I was wondering where the S word was going to be mentioned. Um, the answer to your first question is yes, of course I've considered it. Um, but among the many other considerations, I thought it best to stick fairly closely to what the Windsor Report recommends, that we should, um, we should see this as an event for those who have accepted the general direction of the Windsor Report and haven't flown in the face of its recommendations. So considered but not gone with. As for percentages, because the Lambeth Conference isn't um, a legislative body, and there's not a question of, you know, is it quorate to be settled, I think if a substantial number of people are still absent from it, which is not unlikely, that simply gives us work to do. It's not the end of the world. As I've said, there are any number of other ways in which we meet and relate to one another, and I would hope that we put a lot of energy into, into those other ways. I don't know if either of my colleagues on my left would like to comment on that as coming from other parts of the communion. Or not. <laughs> I think you've exhaustively said it most. So, no schism, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> uh, question for Dr. Williams. Are you going to disinvite Bishop Schofield now that he's been inhibited? Oh, I'm waiting really on what comes out of the uh, American House of Bishops discussion of that. That's not something I've got to see on yet. At the moment, of course, he has an invitation. Yes, so he's still invited. Um, and can I just give a question over to Robin? <coughs> Is it still your hope to go to Dallas later this week? 
Are you going to Dallas later this week? No, you're not. Okay. What would you be saying to the? I mean, what would you say to the bishops in Rwanda in America who have been invited to London? I'd say what I've just said, that the Windsor Report and a whole succession of um, agreements by primates, Lambeth Conference resolutions, have discouraged this sort of intervention between provinces. I can't really sit light to that. Is there anybody who hasn't asked a question you'd like to? Not. Okay. Let's make those the last two then, thank you. I'm Tom Sanderson from Five Towns, microfinance charity. I was very pleased to hear the two speakers speak about those practical things like Mother's Union and other practical... Um, it was rare to mention the Mother's Union. <laughs> they mentioned the practical okay. things. I'm just keen that, um, besides the spouses talking about um, practical outreach and caring for internally displaced people and how the church can be seen as a, as a, a help in the community, showing those love in the community. Will those topics also uh, be discussed and chances for bishops also to, um, to engage and share stories and share activities like that? Yes. In what way? We have the in the groups, the groups of faith, where with the storytelling we should be able to engage in conversation, the sharing of experiences and talking about our own realities and how best we can address them. Perhaps, perhaps I can just add to that. We have a day on transforming society for the bishops. We also have a day on um, safeguarding creation. And because, obviously, a big international conference like this poses a big environmental question, and uh, since nobody's asked the question, I'll answer it anyway, we, we are looking at offsetting strategies, and we have a specific scheme in mind which will go towards offsetting the carbon footprint. So that is something practical that the conference itself will be able to do. Can we, can you really well, we haven't got all the details sorted yet. We have, I think, about 90% certainty that we'll be able to look at um, effectively a reforestation program to which the conference will contribute in substantial part. Final question. Christopher Langley from the BBC. Um, some bishops have raised concerns not just about the attendance of Gene Robinson, but those who participated in his uh, election. Um, what are your reflections on that? And do you are you concerned that by inviting those Episcopal Church bishops who did participate, that that too has a knock-on effect on the numbers who will come from elsewhere? It's obviously been an issue in, in my thinking about it, but I'd say two things. One is that exactly where to draw the line on electors, consecrators, those who weren't in office at the time, those who come into office since, those who participated in those events but then said they wished they hadn't, that all complicates it quite a lot. The second thing, quite simply, is of course the House of Bishops has corporately expressed regret for that in the United States. And while many people don't regard that as wholly adequate, it's something which makes it difficult to regard it as just you know, an open, open question. I want to go with people's good faith on this. I want to go with people's good faith on this. Thank you very much.